Welcome to Upside Down Mirror, one woman's true story of a twin flame journey, a reflection of true love, true hate, and everything between, where everything and nothing matters at the same time. shatter as mirrors of shadows cut through indestructible layers testing the sands of time hello everyone and welcome to episode 20 of upside down mirror i'm going to begin with a little reflection if you've noticed it took me years just to get to episode 20 of upside down mirror and i used to think it was because I was still in a little bit of shock from everything that happened. I was taking time to really process it. You know, I'd make up all these excuses. I was procrastinating. But what I realized is I am divinely guided by spirit. I always have been. I just knew the right times to do things. And the timing is perfect because it gives me the reflection I need to be able to relay it in a way where it can help others because for such a long time when you're going through things you're stuck in your own ego a lot of people think that a twin flame or a soulmate is someone who is just like them or they have a lot of things in common which is true it's always good when you have things in common or someone's just like you you know you can you can have commonalities with one another you get to know each other but what i've realized is that's not necessarily true I realized at this point, you know, once I got back from Sedona, that Ryan and I had a lot of stuff in common. It's almost like being around myself to a point, which then I started reflecting on what I was saying, being around myself. So there were toxic traits, toxic martyring traits that I was still holding on to some codependency traits that I'm still holding on to that Ryan had as well, which allowed us to be in a deeper connection. And I had to stand back and look at that, you know, as the stars aligned, thank God for my universal higher guidance and the things that these amazing light beings bring to me. As they align those stars for me, things shifted in a miraculous way. And I am honored and very grateful to this day that that happened. And I do teach that whenever I do ceremony with my students. I teach the whole star aligning um, technique because it is so very powerful. It's the stars are aligning to create in your blueprint what you're ready for in your heart space. So I started looking at things with Ryan. And... Although we were definitely connected and we could read each other's thoughts and finish each other's sentences, it was like working with myself in a way, that that in itself became problematic because one of the things I was working on releasing is martyring, where I have to save everybody. No one's okay unless Rebecca jumps in and saves the day. They're not doing good till they're done talking to her. And... That is something that I've been looking to release for quite some time. And what I noticed is, is this last pattern was playing out in Ryan. You know, it was like he was this wonderful guy, but he always needed help with something. He couldn't afford to get someplace unless I paid for it. You know, he was stuck until I got him out of the situation. And I realized that was my own toxic need to martyr, need to be that person that saves the day. And why that might be is, think about it. If I'm always the one that saves the day, then I'm never going to be alone. 
people are always going to love me because I'm going to be their savior. That is something that I completely wanted to release because I want to be that bird that's flying in the sky. And if you can soar just as fast as me, come fly with me. And if I can help you along the way, if I can hold your hand as we're flying, yes, I will be that person for you. If you fall down in the dirt, I'll be that person that comes and takes your hands and helps you up. But I can't walk for you. Vitality is the flow of life. You know, that's where the whole, my academy, Awake, Awake, Academy of Wealth, Alchemy, and Kinetic Energy, the kinetic energy part is vitality. So when you're meditating and you're creating all this magical stuff in your energy field through the kundalini work, that is great. But you've got to put that into kinetic energy, which means flow. If you ever learned in science, potential energy is standing still. Kinetic energy means, means to move, to flow. So in order to get places in life, not only do you have to do the energy work, but you have to be able to step into your power. No one can breathe for you except for you. So you have to be the one that decides to take that life force breath. And you have to be the one that allows others to decide to take that life force breath. You can't breathe for somebody else. You can't want more for them than what they want for themselves. And as good as the place as what Ryan and I were in, you know, my brain was like, okay, if I just save him in these little aspects, maybe I could have this for the rest of my life. And I just like saw everything clearly. And once again, I am not comparing Ryan and Sean, and it may sound like I am, but this is with anybody. So if I wasn't even with Sean, I would have still thought this way and vice versa. I would have still thought the things about Sean if I wasn't, you know, with Ryan at points. So I started to realize all of these, all of these things, like you have to trust that the universe is going to show up for you when you love yourself that much. And it is very important that we release these patterns within our, within ourselves so that we can release them across our DNA and also help the collective as well. And remember, what this means is, is you're looking at everything as a mirror. So if you're with somebody who is mean, abusive, ignores you, then in, when you're yelling at them and you're saying you're mean, abusive, and you ignore me, look at yourself in the mirror and say it. Say you're mean, abusive, and you ignore me. So what part of you is ignoring you or being mean and abusive towards yourself, not meeting your needs? If you believe that you're in a relationship where the person is ignoring you and leaving you alone too much, look in the mirror and say what part of you is ignoring you and leaving you alone or what part of you wants to be alone what part of you is stopping that next level of intimacy coming in do you even know what that next level of intimacy looks like how willing are you to connect as deep as you can go and trust the universe that you're going to be beautiful more than okay So when I got back, we went into normal life, not really normal, but everyday things where I was spending time with Sean and Willow and my other children, working with the Awake Academy, having a really good life, like usual. Um, Sean and I were creating magic on our end, you know, we kept making the lake house even more beautiful, our family more beautiful, and the Costa Rica manifested. That went amazing. My guides had told me that we manifested the money for Costa Rica to build a beautiful house slash retreat center on that beautiful piece of land. Everything was flowing. Everything was going just as planned. Once again, we're doing this through our Tantra, 
through constant communication. And let me give you an example of how our communication was starting to be. One time I had went to Costa Rica and I'd had to go for a couple weeks for business. And he was at home with the dogs in Willow. And I'm really kind of a go with the flow type of person to the point where if I drove across country, I wouldn't even know what hotel I was staying at until 30 minutes before I stayed at the hotel. I don't have to be very anal retentive about airfare where I go. I just, I'm, I go with the flow type of person. So a lot of times with Sean, that kind of irritates him because he wants to know what airplane he's going to be on, what hotel he might be staying at. And he said, I just kind of tell him at the last minute and then make him follow me around. Well, I was in Costa Rica and the first three days I started talking to him, he always allowed distractions during our phone calls. Like you could hear the dogs, Willow would come in. We couldn't have one conversation at all. And so finally, the fourth time that this happened, I said to him, I said, this is the fourth time I can't have a conversation with you without the dogs or Willow interrupting. And I said, I've been around you where you get an important phone call and you stand up and you leave the room immediately to take that important phone call. And then he said something, well, I thought you'd want to talk to your daughter. And I said, yeah, I did already. And plus when you and I are done talking, I would talk to her again. And so I said, here's an NLP technique that I learned. Let's take the sound out of everything and just make this a video. And you're a student and you're watching this video and you see on this video, there's a man and he gets these phone calls. And when he gets the phone calls, he goes into a room and you can tell that he's attentive and he's listening, blah, blah, blah. And then he gets these phone calls where he's, you know, just acting very lackadaisical, letting the dogs interrupt. He's constantly looking away from the phone, talking. What are you going to think? How are you going to analyze that when the instructor says, okay, what is the level of importance of each one of those calls? And then he understood it and he said, I get your point. And then he went in to tell me about the resentment, about not even knowing when I was coming home from Costa Rica, my airplane ticket, what time he was p picking me up. So I was okay. I said, that's fair. I was like, that's awesome. And so we were able to resolve that and then everything is good. So, you know, this is the type of, of work we did every single day down to me noticing he let in interruptions during the phone calls. These are a lot of things that couples ignore. They just let pass. But, you know, we got to something that he had told me he had been harboring for a long time is how I don't give him itineraries. And he asked me and I still don't. And so that's on me. That's kind of disrespectful. So I was like, okay. And then I started sending him all the information that he needed and everything was great. He's like, wow, she listens. So these type of things really, really help relationships and then kind of sealing the deal with Tantra. And that's when you can focus together and create these magical heavens together on earth. And then something else that I noticed, and this is taking this back to Ryan. Remember, Ryan and I were a lot of the same, you know, the same music, where we kind of grew up the same. It was like the same. What's that say about me if I'm always attracted to the same? And I started to notice that because Sean, he's the type of person that could play like a melody with his, his right hand and the chords with his left on the guitar. You know, he's good with, you know, piano, foreign languages, like he knows Italian and Spanish, he's learning French. So he's got that whole like artistic thing going on. He can draw art, he can draw faces. So, you know, he's very good at art. And salsa dancing, we already talked about that, how he's really good at salsa dancing. So those are things that I need to grow at. You know, that whole dancing, I mean, I'm good at free flow dancing, but like if it comes to salsa or whatever, I was not that great at that. Um, but yeah, he bought books and he was like, I'm going to teach you how to draw. You know, he's like, the best way to draw something is to turn what you're drawing upside down first, you know, and he's telling me in order to, to hear Spanish and retain it, that there's these earphones he has on that has a certain frequency 
that you might not be able to hear in words that he had bought, where he's going to train my ears to be able to learn the Spanish. And then we had actually started back with the salsa lessons during this point. And it felt so good to open these doors that I've never opened, you know, all the way down to taking hula hoop lessons, you know, doing things that he would do that I normally didn't do. And what I can tell you just from the salsa lessons is we went from being horrible to being really okay with each other, like really good with each other. So, you know, we can now go in and we do dances together and we're laughing and we can go out dancing and we have fun. Before our connection got to this level, I could dance with the teacher, but not with him. And even she was kind of shocked at the transformation because there's not anything logistically that we were doing different. It was just that inner connection. And I looked at him finally, and I was like, okay, you can be my leader because in salsa, there has to be a leader. And I trusted him. And yes, he can lead me in, in the music realm. He can lead me in the language realm and the artistic realm. I want to be the best version of myself and learn things I've never learned before. And I'm so open to it. And if I meet someone that has interests that that I don't do yet, it doesn't mean that they're not my soulmate or my twin flame or whatever. It just means that's a part of me that's not open yet. So I'm asking you to be careful when you judge that. When you're judging, oh, we're so much alike, you know, is that such a great thing? It's good that you're you, you're perfect in the way you are, but what if there's a whole nother side of you that you didn't know about that this person could open for you? So I decided to give him a really good Father's Day present and we would go to an electric festival in Michigan in the forest. And this was actually a very good idea because it was like being on a big psychedelic trip, but with upbeat, positive, active meditation. You know, the music from like this Disclosure and many other different bands. It was all about meditation and healing and being in the moment. You know, they were singing this stuff and the ground would shake. The earth was feeling the power of all of this. It's the only place in any woods where I didn't see any mosquitoes or bugs, which was so unusual. So him and I just microdosed on mushrooms and went to this festival. It was really crowded. I wasn't sure how I'd be able to deal with it, but it actually turned out perfect. We went with two of our good friends. One is a chiropractic doctor and one's a body worker. And they are avid campers. They knew what they were doing because this is all about camping out. Him and I, on the other hand, I used to camp a lot as a child, but I guess I'd forgotten a lot. So they kind of had our backs. But one of the things we had done is we had brought this big clumpy hammock that, um, was rather heavy actually and it had these bars to it and my friend the chiropractor just kind of smiled and he's like yeah that's that's not going to work because we have to do, we have to hike to get to the bus that takes us to where the music is and you're not going to want to be carrying that big hammock and he had these two little hammocks folded and he's like i bought one for you guys so we're like okay and we were just looking around and noticing everything and having fun and holding hands and connecting and I really felt like, wow, I'm seeing this man so differently. Then, And it's not just because of that festival. It's just because of everything I just said. Me opening up and realizing, hey, I need to get over myself. Just because he's not exactly like me or what I think I want, which is expectations can get in your way, does not mean he's not for me. Like, Rebecca, this is about being the best version of you that maybe you don't even know what that's like yet because you think you know what the best version of you is like. But if you would drop what you think that is and let the universe tell you, then you may be pleasantly surprised. And that's what I'm telling you guys as well. So one of the coolest things happened at the festival that I think really, or two things actually that I think really changed us. And the first thing was, is we had put the hammocks up and this band was opening and they were really good. There was like, it was at night, the hula hoopers were out with the lighted hula hoops. That's what made me take up the hula hooping. And, you know, they were doing light shows. It was just awesome. And him and I, these hammocks basically were probably the size of a mother's womb. And it's like twins were together. Like we felt like twins, like him and I were completely enmeshed in one another. And what I can tell you about that is, is 
we found our tantric kissing. We kissed for a very, 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 very long time. Deep, like the first time we had ever met each other. And he was remembering me. I was remembering him. And not only that, I was honoring him. I wasn't shutting down the parts of him that weren't like me. I was saying to him through my story, tell me more about you. Remember, our kissing's a story. And when you're doing tantra kissing, it's like, oh, tell me more. But if there's no more to tell, the story's going to end. And then there goes the exploration of the tongues. It stops, you know, and I'm blaming him completely at this point where now I'm open and I'm saying, okay, tell me more about you. I like what I see. And then he's feeling that energy. He's like, oh, she wants to know more about me. She loves me. She sees me. She likes what she sees. And then he opens up and then the kissing gets deeper and deeper and better and better. And so we did that for quite some time. And then we took a break and we danced. And then we went and spent the night in the parking lot and had a great time. And then the next day, this was also really cool, something magical that happened. We had went to a part of the forest where everybody were put, they were putting their hammocks up. And I saw this part that was a pyramid. Like I see pyramids I think that most people can't see. I can see them going up from trees and their lights. I have them in my backyard. And I said to Sean, I think we're supposed to be hanging on that pyramid, like between those two trees. And just when I said that, our two friends took that spot that I had said, and then the chiropractor friend said to me, here, we'll put you guys over here and it's between two different trees. And so I was like kind of disappointed, but I was like, okay, that's fine. So, you know, this guy is an avid camper. He knows what he's doing. He hangs up our hammock the way he did yesterday. And then he hung up theirs. And Sean and I get into our hammock. The second we get into there and we relax, it just falls on the ground. And it startles my tailbone. And my chiropractor friend was like, I am so sorry. He's like, you don't understand. That's never happened. And I started laughing and I said, I think I know why it happened. I was like, I think we're supposed to be over there in that pyramid. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll put you guys um, below us. So they were actually, theirs was hanging on top of us. And then we were right below them on the pyramid. And then everything worked out really cool. But we got a lot of energetic downloads that night. But that's an example of how the universe shows up. Like if you don't listen to your messages, I knew we were supposed to be in that pyramid. We weren't. So we, I fell and hit my butt tailbone in particular because that's like hey wake up you got some grounding to do and that's kind of the way everyday life is when we don't listen to our messages so once again I want you guys to remember to always listen to those little messages that you get we came home it was a very happy trip happy to see our children playing on the lake together going boating spending time with friends and then it was time to plan for his mother's arrival his mother is english because because he's english i guess you guys know that um he purposely would make sure that her and i weren't in the same room before for some reason i have never seen him treat a woman as bad as he does his mother i remember even telling him one time if you ever talk to me the way you talk to your mother we would be done so I had a lot to understand and this visit was going to be very telling and plus I'm always wondering why Willow had gained that much weight while she was in his mother's energy. So we planned it for the month of August. Right now it's kind of the end of June and so we had a month to prepare. While that month was happening I just got a feeling to open a divine masculine portal in our backyard. I didn't know why it was divine masculine, but I was told that. And I was told to open it to Nicki Minaj's super bass song. The universe is really fun and it allows you to do energy work if you're doing it in the play, method play methodology the way I do and have fun at the same time as long as your intentions are where they need to be. So my daughter, she didn't even know, my five-year-old, she didn't even know what song I had chose. And I was getting out my play playlist and she picked that exact song. So she's giving me the stickers that she's getting from the trees. We're opening up the portals. 
and we're doing our energy work and then I knew to get my camera and I take a picture of it and there is of course I have this on on photograph and I've shown my students the picture of the divine masculine portal that we had opened and you can't even make it up it was an energy field with these little holes throughout it so then I left it like that for a couple weeks and all of a sudden I heard the universe say now it's time to put the divine feminine in and it wait it was more than a couple weeks because it was actually when my husband was on his way to pick up his mother from the airport and that's when I got the message because I had taken Willow out to, to eat and I said Willow oh we need to open up the feminine part of our portal and I was like what song should we do it to and just when I said that we were pulling out from eating at Denny's and I heard girls just want to have fun come on so I was like okay there's our answer so I was like so while daddy's gone we're going to open up the divine feminine aspect of this she was super excited she went home and her and I did all of our work opened up the divine feminine she's throwing me stickers I'm activating them we're going from the heart space you know with true love intentions um health prosperity wellness and I take a picture of it and it turned from the energy field with the little holes in it that the masculine had to a huge energetic third eye around my house you could see where the divine masculine transformed when it had the divine feminine in it and I was like oh this is really cool and I didn't understand why I had to open it up until Sean got there with his mother so his mother is unlike my mother my mother she was so affectionate when I was a child always hugging always kissing us I was surprised to hear mothers didn't do that you know tickling us telling us that she loved us we were always very very affectionate with one another my sister's mother and I so his mother was the opposite you know she didn't really know how to connect and that sort of close way and remember during this time I'm still on this episode of releasing weight which I was doing really well with you know energy work releasing weight doing work on myself releasing weight and also working on you know my relationship with food and how I was bringing it back in but I was eating when she came into the kitchen when she first walked in and she walks up to me and she says you sure do have a hearty appetite and she gives me this look and that was like the first thing she says to me and I was thinking okay this is going to be a very interesting three weeks because that's how long she was staying but before I could even think about being resentful to her the way Niall treated her took all of that away he basically would not be in the same room with her he would leave if she was up upstairs he would go downstairs if she would say something at all he would disagree you know he was he obviously had major resentment towards his mother so I was thinking okay this is the perfect time to work on all of this and we began like right away we began with her leaving him when he was 11 and 12 for a different man moving to Italy and that his dad raised him you know there's a lot of things that happened there where it caused him not to trust women right and obviously I I know I went through that with him so he had a lot of forgiveness to work on with her but the thing about the portal was is the next morning she woke up and she was so sick staying in a room throwing up vomiting having diarrhea and she said I haven't been this sick in a long time Rebecca she was like that for two days and I didn't even have to say it that's how awakened Sean is becoming he says it's the portal it's making her sick because it's true love it's health it's joy it's compassion it's connection and if you go into portals like that and you've got those stuck stagnant intimacy issues you're going to purge them out that's what ayahuasca does she was having an ayahuasca experience by just being in our house 
something else magical that happened right after we opened up the masculine part of the, uh, or excuse me, the feminine part of the masculine portal, an apple tree grew right next to the portal that had never been there. I saw it, these beautiful, little delicious apples. And I said to Sean, they weren't there. And he said, no, Rebecca, I walk the dogs every day. They weren't there. And the neighbors are coming over asking if they could use our apples and that they would bring us pies and cider. And that apple tree literally grew overnight. And then I asked Willow and she said, yeah, duh, mom, the, the trees give us energy. The trees were giving me the energy to put in the portals, which then grew the apple tree. And so we were having us, as well as Sean's mother, eat these apples. And eventually awake students ate them when they came to my house too, for the process of healing. Finally, after two days, you know, and this woman does not know me this well. On our wedding day, she posted something on Facebook, and I think I already said this about how toxic marriage was. So, you know, she wasn't like my biggest fan. She just wasn't even really open to any of her children being married. She has two sons, and none of them had been married, or they had they didn't have any kids. So, so I'm very authentic, and I believe so much in the work I do that she was sitting there asking why she got that sick and I pulled up the picture of the portals first the masculine and then what the masculine and feminine look like together and I said do you see this she goes yeah she goes is that behind your house and I said yeah Willow and I did that I said we opened up a portal to true love before you came and I said everything that was not true love in you you threw up and you purged out through diarrhea she looked at me and she was surprisingly accepting and then she said I just wish you would have told me that ahead of time so I could have been prepared and that's all she said about it Sean's face just gets this cute shade of red and he just starts laughing he looks at me and he says my mom is going to have an amazing three weeks here and just sort of chuckles so I felt like yeah there was a lot to work through but this was going to help everybody on every level. I will continue in episode 21 of Upside Down Mirror.